Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So, in this lecture, we'll see the very important topic that is about the importance of the shear force, right? So far, we understood about the bending moments. Now, we'll try to understand about the shear force. Now, if I take you to the basics of our engineering, maybe uh, when we were doing our engineering, right? We had understood about how to plot the shear force diagram. The same thing I'm trying to do it here. So, let us consider this is a beam what I have, and this is one support, and this is another support, right? And I'm going to draw one line there. And let us say, if you remember, so this is a shear force what I have, and this is a typical drawing that we used to get when we when we were doing manual calculations during our strength of materials or structure analysis classes, right? We were getting a, a shear force here. I was getting a shear force here, and from here we were trying to draw it linearly unless the loading is a uniformly distributed loading, right? Yeah. Now let us consider. <clears throat> I'm getting a shear force here of hundred kilonewton. And also a shear force here of 100 kilonewton, right? So this is a support, okay? Because always remember the shear force will act from the support, whereas the bending moment will act from the middle of this, okay? That is why I've taken the line here. So shear force will be acting at the support always. So this is a face of my support, and this is a face of my support. Support. So that is why I've taken the 100 kilonewton line here, and this is my 100 kilonewton line, okay? And let us say somewhere in the middle. My uh, shear force is something 50 kilonewton and also 50 kilonewton here. Okay, because if it is 100 here, by the time it is coming down, it might have been like this is 100. This might be 90, 80, 70, 60, and 50, and it may be 40, 30, 20, and up. This is a zero point, right? Again, from here it is minus 10, minus 20, minus because uh, shear force one side will get positive and other is a negative. That is a sign convention what we follow, right? So at this particular region, so here what has happened? Here I'm getting 50 kilonewton. Here I'm getting 50 kilonewton. In this portion, your shear force is almost like uh, zero in this portion, right? This is zero. And in this portion, it is even less than 50, right? Yeah. So now what is the practical importance of it? Since the shear force is maximum here, what will happen? I'll write it in this way. So near the support, I'll write here. Near the support, I'll write shear force. Shear force is more, right? So if shear force is more, what, we, what, is, what will happen if shear force is more? More steel is required. More steel is required. If shear force is more, more steel is required. So more steel in a sense, more stirrup is required. More stirrups, right? Because the stirrups are provided to take care of the shear force. So more stirrups are required. And if, how can I give more stirrups by lesser spacing by keeping lesser spacing? I can give more stirrups, right? So you are able to understand this. So that is why practically whenever we put up, yeah. Okay. This is completely gone. Yeah, by keeping less spacing, I can give more stirrups. So that is why practically you can see this was my support, isn't it? And here's a shear force was more. So here also the shear force was more. So if more shear force is there, what is what is required? More steel is required. So more steel means more stirrup is required. So more stirrup can be given by keeping it a lesser spacing. That is why practically whenever we were, we were understanding the center to center distance for the stirrup, here we were keeping at 100 mm, 100 mm, 100, 100, 100 and so on. Here also it was 100, 100, 100, 100, and 100. But if you come to the middle portion, here what has happened from the 50 your shear force is 40, 30, 20, and 0, right? So that means here the shear force is less. If shear force is less, then what will happen? Less steel is required. Less steel means less steer up is required. So how can you provide a less steer up? Less steer up can be provided by giving more spacing. So that is why practically you had seen here whenever at the center we were increasing the spacing, right? So if this was 100, let us say here it was 150. 150, 150, 150, 150, and 150. Why? Because here, when the shear force itself is less, then more steel is not required, less steer up is required. So that is why practically this is what we try to practice. Getting my point? Now you may ask me one question, sir. Since it is 50 kilonewton, by the time it reaches here, it is zero kilonewton. That means I don't require any shear, I don't require any steer up here. That means there is no steel requirement. Yes, according to mathematics, I don't require any steer ups here. I don't require any steel. But practically, it is not possible. If you don't give the steer up in the middle portion, you can see the top steel. That is a top longitudinal straight bar. This one. Yeah. 
So this is your top longitudinal straight bar, isn't it? And this is your bottom one. So how will you hang this? It's not, it's difficult for you to hang if you don't give the stirrup. That is why in the bottom, in the middle portion also, we'll try to give the stirrup, but we'll increase the spacing. Okay, that, that is how we do practically. So here in this portion, practically you don't require. In this portion, practically you don't require any stirrup, but you cannot do it uh, keeping the execution point of view. So what we try to do, we try to increase the spacing here, right? Yeah, so I hope you are able to understand from here most of the things. And now we'll try to go forward. Now coming to the practical thing. So this is a beam what I've casted. I mean, this is a beam what I have. So whenever you try to load, you know, whenever you try to load, what will happen? We'll be having different cracks here. So usually the first crack is going to come here. You can see the lot of cracks here. This is the first cracks what's going to come, okay? So here up to this center portion, your cracks will be very straight. I mean, your cracks are going to be straight because it is only a flexural cracks. The moment it will go to the sides, you no. Know, what will happen? It will try to create an angle. So these are your flexural and the shear cracks. Why? Because here flexure is also acting and also due to the shear force, your cracks will go in the inclined angle. You can see in this way. So in the center, you don't have it. Center, it is almost vertical. But the moment you reach here, since your flexural and shear cracks are more, this is the kind of a cracks you're going to get. Getting my point? Now, if I try to remove that, you can see how these cracks are coming. See, in the angle, they are going to come, isn't it? So if I want to stop these cracks, but in the center, you see, this is not in this way. In the center, the cracks are exactly 90 degree because it is pure flexural cracks because here I don't have any shear force. Okay. Here only the flexural cracks will happen, right? So that is why in the middle portion, what we do, we try to give only the uh, stirrup at the larger spacing. But here, what will happen? We are going to give at the closer spacing. Why the stirrups will be given? Because you see the cracks. So this is how the crack is propagating, isn't it? So how do we give the stirrup? If I give the front view of a stirrup so this is my stirrup this is my one leg right this is my another stirrup right so this is my another stirrup right this is my another in the same way here also i'm going to give a stirrup okay i'm showing you the longitudinal view by this time you should develop all this idea when i say longitudinal view you should understand okay now if i try to do the crack yeah here also got it yeah yeah now if i try to put the crack here See the cracks. So the moment this shear cracks happens, what will happen? You can see the length. We used to call this as a two leg stirrup, right? So this legs were, like I mentioned, this legs will help you in stopping the cracks. It will not allow the crack to propagate. In the same way, the moment the crack comes, what will happen? This particular stirrup, what you have provided, it is going to stop. Okay. Again, it will not, it will arrest the crack. It will not allow the crack to propagate. Similarly, if the crack comes here, it will propagate up to this distance. So again, what will happen? This particular stirrup, what you have provided, the leg, what you have provided, no, it is going to stop the cracks. Getting my point? Now, just in case, if you're not given the spacing at the closer distance, let us say you give one uh, space, one bar here, one stirrup here, and next you give somewhere here. So what would have happened? Maybe the crack may come here. Of course, the crack is going to come because the shear force is maximum there. So what will happen? There is no one to stop. It will easily go up to the top. The moment it goes to the top, my concrete is in compression now. So uh, since it's a shear, a shear cracks, again, what will happen? There is a failure of your structure. I mean, failure of your beam. So that is why near the support, you have to place at a very closer spacing so that it will not, so the cracks will not allow to propagate. I mean, this stirrup will not allow the cracks to propagate, right? You can see practically also how the cracks have developed. This is very important because in the center, you do, you can, if you see here, it's not a shear crack. It's a pure flexural cracks. What I'm getting straight 90 degree cracks only in the support. I'm going to get this 45 degree and always this uh, cracks will happen in 45 degree. So that is why we try to give the stirrups there, right? Yeah. So I hope up to here, you are able to uh, understand most of the things about the importance of the shear force. How do you practically do that? Now I'll take you to a few of the structural drawing and we'll try to understand through that. Yeah. Now. Now, if I ask you about this drawing, now you are in a position to understand the bending moment and also the shear force. So quickly, I'll try to plot the bending moment for this and also the shear force. In one drawing, we'll try to understand. So here near the support, it will be negative bending moment and I'll be having a positive. I'll be having a negative. I'll be having a positive, a small neg ne Okay, fine. Similarly, if I try to plot the shear force for this, I'll be drawing a shear force also. So I'll draw it in this way right at the top okay so here the shear force will be maximum here also shear force will be maximum and i'll try to connect in this way got it so 
Okay, let me draw two different beams. This is not required. Okay, I'll draw here. I'll draw. Wait. Yeah. Then another. We'll draw it here. Okay. So we'll try to connect in this way. Uh, yeah. Similarly, I'll try to draw another here. Okay. Next representation I'm doing. And I hope this is correct, right? In this way only you have to do. Yeah, got it. Now you see your shear force is maximum in this portion. Shear force is maximum, but at the center, it is very less. So practically you can see they have given five inches here because shear force is maximum. In the center, they've increased the spacing to 10 inches. Again, here they have given it as five inches because here shear force is maximum. Same logic holds get here. They are given seven inches because your shear force is maximum in this portion. In the middle portion, your shear force is very less. So we have increased the spacing. And here also we have de uh, decreased the spacing because the shear force is maximum. You got the logic. So this is the practical importance of all these things. Now, always remember, you are given a maximum spacing of 12 inches. Whenever we give the stirrups, no? Maximum you can give up to 300 mm and you cannot go beyond that. The code doesn't allow us. Even 300 mm we don't give. The code will not allow. I mean, the the normal consulting practice what we adopt is 200 mm is the maximum spacing what we try to give in beam. Here it's a local construction drawing what I'm showing you. These people will go up to 12 inches to save the steel. But when you work in a bigger consulting firm and all, we don't give the spacing more than 200 mm. We try to restrict up to 200 mm. That is a normal practice what we adopt. Yeah. Now, I hope you have understood up to here. Now, one thing may come in your mind about this five inches, 10 inches and five inches. What is the distance? So usually the distance will not be there. What you can do, like I mentioned, whatever is your span of a beam no? from here to here, you divide it by three. Whatever is a span, you divide it by three. And till there, you have to place your stirrup. That means, let us say this span, whatever I have, I'll write it as, uh, I'll write this as 10 meter. So to get the stirrup spacing, I'll divide it by three. That is 10 divided by three. I'm going to get it as 3.33 meter. So what you're supposed to do? So this particular thing, this five, this five inches spacing from the outer face of the column up to 3.33 meter, you place it as five, you place it at five inches center to center spacing. Even from this column outer to up to 3.33 meter, you place it at uh, five inches center to center spacing and whatever is your remaining area, right? Whatever is your remaining, that is the center portion, you place your stirrup at 10 inches center to center spacing. So the normal practice, what we follow is uh, we divide it by L by three and then we try to divide it. This is my left zone. I call this as my left zone, middle zone and the right zone. In this way, you can try to do that. And that is a good way of doing. So in few, uh, few people, what they do is they directly give you what is the length and all. You can do the execution according to that if that is given. Okay, like here you can see. Yeah, here also they are not given it. Yeah, here you can see, you know, see up to here he has given 815, 815 years given. Like I mentioned you how to, we have already seen how to calculate the state up here, right? Sometimes if they don't give, you can do that L by three and based on that, you are going to get it. Yeah, these people have done the same thing. So it is 2440, right? Try to do that. 2440, you divide it by three. If I do it manually, I'm getting 813. I can take this as 815. Okay. So that is why you can see 815 written here. So that is a normal practice what we try to do. Even you can uh, check for other beams also. Let me try to do, I'm not sure. Yeah, 47. Six five divided by three. Yeah, here here they are not given any. Okay, here throughout the spacing is same. Yeah, sometimes see whatever I told you know it's not that all the time you're going to get lesser spacing at the support and uh, more at the middle and lesser at the support. Here you can see throughout he has given one fifty. That means throughout the beam you have to keep one fifty center to center spacing. So it depends on the ETAB results or the Stadprod results and also depends on the beam. Uh, okay, if you want to practice that, you can practice that. Some people will give throughout the same thing. That is also okay. But actually in the middle portion, it is not required. The best practice is you increase the spacing at the center because we already know the concept about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, similarly, you take this as an assignment. See, 5020 is written. 
Now tell me what should be the stirrup spacing here. Again, what I'm supposed to do 5020, you divide it by 5020, you divide it by three. Uh, manually, if I do, I'm getting 1673. And practically, what these people have pro provided 1675 mm, right? You can see here they have provided 1675, 1675. Now, how many stirrup will come? We know to do that is 1675, you divide it by 105. Let me quickly do that. If I'm repeating it, I'm sorry, but uh, I want you to learn it. 1675 divided by 105. Tell me the number of stirrup quickly so that you, you get ready to work directly on the site. 1675 divided by 105. So I'm getting a 15.95. I can take it as 16. 16. Whenever we put the stirrup, you have to add one to that plus one comes out to be 17 number of stirrup is required in this particular beam. Got it? Yeah. Now coming to the last part. Okay. Last part. Uh, I want to uh, take you this as a kind of assignment and quickly tell me from how I'm getting this five feet here and how I'm getting three feet, three inches here. So for this, I'll give you this uh, drawing. See quickly, I'll give you one example. See from this column center to this column center, the distance is 13 feet. And I want to know how from where I'm getting is three feet, three inches quickly. What you're supposed to do, take the distance 13 feet and 0.25 is what you have to do. I'll write here. So 13 feet, if I multiply this by 0.25, tell me how much I'm getting 13 into 0.25. I'm getting 3.25. That means, that means three feet, uh, two and, uh, three feet, two, three feet, uh, 25 inches it is. So practically what these people have written three feet, three inches, they have written. Okay. Three feet, three inches. It is three feet, two inches to uh, three feet, two inches. Here you are getting three feet, three inches. Okay. They have taken it to the next higher value of three feet, three inch. Similarly, how I'm getting this five feet here. So for five feet, what you're supposed to do come here. What is the distance from this column to this column? Add it. So this is eight feet. This is eight feet, eight, eight, 16, 16 plus two is 18 feet from this center to this 18 feet and six inches and six inches is another one feet. So 19 feet and nine inches. So 19 feet, nine inches. If you multiply by 0.25, you're going to get this answer. I did it. I got 4.95 and practically these people have put as five feet. You can try to do it manually and you'll, you'll be getting the same answer, right? Yeah. So we were able to understand most of the things, how to do the shear force calculation, uh, how to understand the importance of shear force and all those things. Yeah. So in the next lecture, we'll try to see how a beam is a practically designed how to design it as a one way beam. I mean, a single reinforced and a double reinforced beam. And also with the help of ATAP software, we'll try to understand that. So I hope you have enjoyed the lecture up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.